it has been a time of clarification, if not clarity. Um, it's actually not our turn right now, but we are waiting for someone to clarify or, or change one of their moves before we can go. Uh, but we might just start with our innovation actions anyway, because this is our time to film. And uh, we don't want people to have to wait on us when it is going to be our turn. The person who we're waiting for did play their turn, but turns out one of the things they did was illegal. Or, yeah, illegal, and so they have to, to go back and change it. There's been a lot of clarifications lately, uh, mainly involving sieges. And to tell the truth, I'm not quite sure what was decided on that, how sieges work. Sieges and sabbing raids, if you're in someone's hex, can you then sabbing raid them? The rules have been changing. There's been discussions with the designer, uh, Phil Eklund, and he's been changing the, the rules as things get brought up. He has a, a fluid uh, notion of rules, and I, I can appreciate that. Um, so what, what else has been going on? Uh, things have been speeding up. The Hobbit Lord here has an interesting situation going. He's the first to the Golden Age, so he has learned obedience. He has went from metaphoric language to obedience. Um, and interestingly enough, he got federalism around the same time, just, just after that. Which is good for him because he's got two points, uh, but, but bad for him because it's going to make it harder for him to go into chaos, which you know presumably wants to do. He wants to get the tax riot so he can be in Era 3. Um, so that's kind of his situation. Wolf Corbett over here, he did try to domest domestication. I forget which, which one I predicted. I made a prediction about what he would domesticate last turn, whether it be the wheat or the zebra. I think I thought it would be the zebra, but he tried for the wheat. It did not work. So, yeah, we'll see. I guess he, he's got two elders, so he can do another shot. He's actually looking pretty good elder-wise. Uh, everyone else has been getting sick and losing elders and everything like that. Um, possessive man Jonathan Bolton, I can't remember what he did on his last turn. He, yeah, I, cu I couldn't tell you. Um, USR Local had an interesting move, he just played. Um, what was interesting about it was, uh, he's, I guess uh, he's interesting to me right now because I haven't had a lot of interaction with him in the game. He's been enslaved for much of it, and then when he came out of sla and before he was enslaved, it was sort of a passive time of the game. We were all kind of getting to know each other, and there wasn't any like competition for space. There were less, you know, kind of options on what you would do. Now um, he, you know, he established the the stuffy nosed and taunt, and then he did something kind of curious. He he did a couple moves, one of which was an attack on Flush, who's in his territory as far as the Entente's concerned, but uh, we, of course, didn't weren't a part of that, um, that agreement. So he did an attack on Flush. Flush is still there because the attack turned out to be uh, not necessarily illegal, it just wouldn't have had the result that he thought it would. So he went back, or I suggested he go back, and um, then he just, you know, I, it's, it seemed like he, he felt some remorse about attacking Flush, which <laughs> I wouldn't, <laughs> you know, I would attack Flush right away, but then again, he doesn't have to listen to Flush all the time. Uh, so he decided uh, when in doing his remove not to attack Flush. He very well could have from a couple of different spaces, but he decided not to. He does have Maritime 2 though, so I think we're going to, Cowboy's going to have company in the New World pretty soon. Um, yeah, I think the Hobbit Lord also has Maritime 2, so we're not going to be alone there much longer. Uh, what we do have is the ability to go through the tundra. I guess that's the, kind of our one advantage now. Um, so that's tricky. It's always tricky when someone makes peaceful actions, like makes and taunts, so, you know, to, to make it so people don't fight, or says they're not going to attack you from out of remorse because you don't know what their real motivation is. I, th I seem to think that maybe he's playing peacefully, but I think he's probably also playing competitively. Uh, I think peace is sometimes a good thing. We've done a lot of warmongering in this game, partially thanks to Flush, which is why I wouldn't mind if he got a little bit of a comeuppance. I also think it's an interesting um, uh, scenario here. Flush, I, I, I think is, in terms, you know, he felt left out of this group. And he's kind of just standing here among them. He did a little bit of retaliation. And then, you know, he, he, he's wondering if he should be ejected or, or what. Very interesting. So this turn, what are our choices? Um, 
Well, if we're going for the maize beans, we'd want to do a storyteller, which would be nice because we could go over our um, our recent acquisitions and our technology over time and go over kind of a brief history of our people um, in order to bring bring Little Red back into the producer side of things. We could uh, jump ahead into Era 2. We could take this card. Um, that would be a problem, though. We could also bring our eye back. Um, so we'll have to think about that, and I'll get back to you. Turns out I was the one who needed the clarification. The information I was waiting on was just my misreading of someone's graphic. Um, I interpreted the graphic to mean something that it didn't mean, and so I was like, well, wait, does that mean that? And they were like, someone else was like, no, it, you're wrong. And so now I can play my full turn. And Little Red is going to have to wait for his story, because we found something kind of interesting to do. And I don't know if you know about this, about us, but our our totem trait is curious. We have the herder, we have the um, family values person here, USR local, which I guess that kind of fits with this intent. He would like the whole family to get along. And then we have the possessive man, possessive individual freedom. And then we have the Alpha Homo Sapiens, and I guess there there must be something on the other side of the card. But we're curious, which um, you know the 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 Mars uh, rover Curiosity landed around the time of the Man of Giraffe Destiny. We felt like that was one of the signs that that would work out, um, that we could build a city in the sand, uh, so to speak. Um, so anyway, we're curious, so we're going to do something different than maybe what was the obvious move for us. We're going to um, ransack Shellfish Middens, which is a fairly useless card to us except for this this eye here, which we like. And then we're going to go ahead and play Daubed Granaries, uh, which is one of our favorites for the double fecundity decrease. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. And then we're going to go ahead and play Shellfish Middens atop that so that we still have the the option for future ransacking of cards. Um, and then for our population action, that's where it gets tricky. Uh, Flush would like to be a player here, but everyone else, and even Flush actually, wants Cowboy to move to the beans, and so he's going to. And that's where we're going to end it. Cat as in Cat's dinner party is all done. Cocktail party, I guess. Uh, had a roaring game where everyone was learning, uh, but really enjoying uh, this game of Mega Core uh, right here. Lots of fun. Just since I mentioned it before, I just thought I'd check in and let you know how things ended. There was a lot of um, negotiation. It's definitely a game of negotiating. You have to do a lot of horse trading in this game, except instead of horses, it's money, mercenaries, companies, countries, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Brazza was definitely dominant throughout. He uh, he took he had a strong military, uh, which I don't think is necessarily key to the game, but it worked in this case. He got this kleptocracy here, and he he then used that to steal the companies in there. A lot of it was um, you know as we kind of came to as I kind of came to understand rules, people will get hit with things that they probably wouldn't next you know on on subsequent plays. Um, Roadrunner and Brother were kind of the both the military powers. Fat Matt was sort of beat up. He was down to no money at one point. Um, and I I very well think I could have made some accounting errors as well. I wasn't I wasn't playing as um, uh, alertly as I normally do because I was really just trying to get to understand the game so I could teach it to other people. Because this is this one I think would be a lot of fun to play with humans. Um, but so I, I don't know if I maybe made a mistake and that's why he was out of money. But he ended up with 60, which is a decent showing. That was about the the median there. Here's the ending number of euros. Um, I'm thinking I probably didn't do so well with anyone because there's a hundred hundred euro bills in there and I never used them. Um, but there we go. Cobweb, she got spanked. Um, she was in a lot of... She, she did a... Um, she did a backstabby move kind of early on, and I think that kind of hurt her after she did that. It made people not trust her as well, and she ended up without a country. You definitely don't need a country uh, to survive in this game, but 
you know, people can block you out of things if they have a country and you don't. Um, so no one was willing to make deals with her kind of after she did that backstabby move. Um, that's how it went out. A lot of fun.